dear participants welcome to the fourth and the last week of this online faculty development program on communication skills and personality development i dr utpal ganatra have conducted three sessions so far this is our fourth and the last session to the today the title of my presentation today is being a lifelong learner through self motivation the points which i am going to discuss today are lifelong learning as an attitude nurturing a growth mindset continuing professional development and creating your brand as a teacher let us begin with a quote by a very influential author alvin toffler he states the illiterate of the 21st century are not those who cannot read or write but those who cannot learn unlearn and relearn it's time to think about this it happened with everyone when we were in primary school our teacher taught us the sun rises in the east and sets in the west at that initial level we considered it learning and felt happy to know about it but later on when we grew up we came to know again that the sun never rises or sets it is the earth which rotates around the sun now that was what can be considered as unlearning and relearning so i believe that lifelong learning should be an attitude rather than a process or a conscious act or an obligation it should be an attitude as far as we teachers are concerned let us go ahead well as far as learning is concerned we know that there are two types of learning the first is teacher driven which is called pedagogical which happened in schools and colleges and another is when we complete our formal education we individually do something to learn something new which is considered andragogical now having gone through these two things we need to understand that we have already crossed the first stage when we completed our masters or uh, uh, the formal qualification part but then the real story the real journey of learning starts when we are individ we become individual learners and we become teachers we also need to take into consideration the four pillars of learning just merely learning some information or some textual in part is not sufficient we need to know the four pillars that is learning to know learning to do learning to be and learning to live together much can be discussed about this but these are the four pillars and uh, i request you to think about that how far we have progressed in the four pillars of learning well why teachers and learning we are teachers our task is to teach then why are we supposed to learn very simple learning precedes teaching in order to teach something to our students we, we need to teach learn it twice and as we have already re referred earlier learning unlearning and relearning is an essential part of our growth in 21st century today the world is changing at a very fast pace and we cannot help but progress and learn something in order to survive we are considered role model our students have a high respect for us we ourselves as a teacher insist our students to study well but we need to ask ourselves do we study well do we are we learning something every year every moment a teacher is also considered has to be considered should be considered as a senior learner we need to look upon us as senior learners in the classroom it is said that a good teacher is also a good learner because he automatically learns something in his journey of teaching many of us think that i know very much or i know very less well lifelong learning is for both such types of people who who feel that they know more or they know more less because we need to learn a lot i should say that even the best cannot rest because as per the current standards what is the best today may not remain the best tomorrow in order to maintain that position he or she has to keep learning so let us try to understand how we can nurture a growth mindset look at the picture do you feel that the person is crazy because he deliberately closed his door locked it and threw away the key what 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 after all this fellow is doing but if we introspect at a deeper level we find that sometimes we also throw 
our curiosity over time by simply locking our mind and refusing to learn. Sometimes we state that I know much, I don't need to know this. So, but that is uh, nothing else but, but throwing the key. So when we see, when we feel that I know everything, that means we are throwing the key to learn something. So basically there are two types of mindset. The first is fixed mindset, another is growth mindset. I don't need to discuss or elaborate much upon this picture because uh, it is uh, self-evident. What I suggest to you is that we as teachers, all of us should ignite our minds. We should adapt a growth mindset. We should look for ways to do things better manner. We should challenge ourselves with unfamiliar things, situations, tasks or assignments. We should also keep our minds open to new possibilities, knowledge and skill areas because an open mind is a growing mind. A very important and relevant issue here is continuing professional development. Uh, unfortunately, most of the teachers feel stuck up in their daily routines of teaching learning so much so that we, they forget to think about themselves. I am not talking about just merely attending some training programs every year as a part of compulsion or as a part of wish, but this has to be considered in a very conscious manner because continuous professional development is a personal responsibility of our teachers. You cannot rest upon someone else to do it on your own, uh, to do it for you. So let us take responsibility of our continuing professional development. If we try to explore it, we need to keep this example into mind. I'm sure this, uh, the screen, the, pic the picture which I have put here is relevant and is familiar to all of us because we do it every day. So this is exactly what you and me need to do with ourselves as teachers. We need to update ourselves and that is what basically continuing professional development is all about. Uh, if we try to explore the two ways in which we can develop, our profession, uh, de develop ourselves professionally, the first is formal way, which is uh, uh, going for some educational qualifications, joining some programs, uh, involving in, our, in formal research, attending some academic events, uh, knowing something new, for example, attending some foreign language classes or latest technology or software classes, attending some technical events as a part of formal requirements. Another is informal part, which is having an informal discussion with our colleagues on a variety of topics concerning all of us, uh, reading something informally, uh, watching some videos, listening to some podcast, observing some teachers, uh, having a discussion with our mentors and having an effective collaboration with our teachers, with colleagues, so that we learn something new and we turn out to be better teachers. Uh, growth is life as far as, as long as we are teachers, we have no choice but to accept this. We need to keep doing something new. We should embrace daily challenges positively. We should not stop learning new tools, techniques, technology, strategies and ways without any kind of fear or hesitation. We should try to improve our professional competence by updating knowledge and skills. Another thing that we should not miss is improving areas. First of all, identifying areas of improvement and then working upon it. That can be done on the basis of your self-assessment, reflection and by gaining feedback from students, colleagues and superiors, principal or head. A very important strategy that I am going to mention now is networking. See, we as teachers may be working in the best manner possible, but then sometimes we realize that there is much to be learnt only when we network with people. The power of networking is immense. I am not going to focus more on its depth, but then let us uh, know what is meant for us. We should try, all of us should try to create a professional learning network with our colleagues, with fellow teachers and senior academicians in, around, in our area or, near, or in our circle. Uh, let us have an, an earnest effort to meet teachers from other institutes in surrounding areas because they might also give you something new. We should try to attend academic, technical and professional events with much enthusiasm. Well, uh, we live in a society where there is so much to learn. Uh, I believe that we as a teacher personally should not restrict ourselves to academic grounds only. Uh, if we uh, step into the real world, we will find that there are many organizations which are working for the change and betterment of this world. So 
if we want to learn something new apart from our educational areas, we should be an active member of some organizations. I am, I am basically talking about two, or two types of organizations. The first is professional organizations which can help us in strengthening our educational side, which can help us in growing our academic confidence. They are uh, including IST and ISTD, Indian Society for Technical Education, which is a part of this online FDP, and ISTD, that is Indian Society for Training and Development. Another part is social organizations. These are the few noted names. As such, I can add a lot of names here. Even you will find that in the area where you are staying, you will find that lots of NGOs or voluntary organizations are working a big deal. So you can join them also if you are interested in that area. But the few ones which I have mentioned here are JCI, Lions Club, Rotary Club and local NGOs, of course, which I mentioned already. Networking online, which is an essential part to live in this 21st century. Uh, I suggest you all to create, if you have done it already, that's good. But if you have not done it so far, please create your profile in LinkedIn, in LinkedIn which is a professional networking site, a very wonderful platform to connect very senior academicians with each other. Uh, all of us are aware about Facebook, social networking site. It's up to you how, how to use it or how much to make use of it for a constructive academic purpose. Third is subject specific online teacher forums. The subject or the area in which you are working, the area which you are teaching or have been training for many years, you can find it, find those areas on Google. In Facebook also, you will find some teachers uh, related to your academic discipline. So you can do that. I think we all of us should, uh, of course, we should network more and more, but then by doing so, we should be receptive. Only doing networking for its own sake is not sufficient. After networking with people, we should also be receptive. We should try to learn something from them. So we should try to meet new people with an open mind whenever we meet them. We should try to exchange knowledge, ideas, and practices. We should have a chat, conversation, or a discussion with them. We should also make an effort to know diverse POVs, that is, point of views, and see, the, see things new ways. Because what happens is, after a, a long experience of teaching, sometimes we feel that uh, this is, I know sufficient uh, as far as my requirements are concerned. But then trying to know something new or different point of views can help us a lot in reshaping ourselves. So think, you should also think why someone holds ar someone around you who is talking to you, he or she, why, why does he hold a different point of view? Think about that. We cannot ignore research as far as our professional development is concerned. So very few tips on this. You should understand the latest research or the best practices in your subject or area. Try to be an independent researcher or a part of researchers group. I, uh, if you look around, you will find there are immense opportunities around you. Training. How can we forget the very branch on which we all of us are sitting right now? We are involved in a training which has definitely taught you a lot during these four weeks. But I'm, you know that training is very much important and we should have training. But the thing that I'm going to highlight, I want to highlight is there's something different. All of us, of course, I know that all of us part are keep participating in a training program according to our need or interest or sometimes by compulsion also. But then what I, what I want to suggest to you is if you are going to participate in a program or if you are uh, going there by who, uh, I mean, by compulsion, by your own wish or uh, just because of your own interest or because of any other intention, but then when you, are, when you have already entered it, when you are already uh, attending it, that program, I think all of us should participate effectively as an active reserver. And we should also try to learn genuinely from it. Technology, the demand of it has increased thousands folds in this COVID-19 times. So be aware of new technologies and tools for teaching and learning. Try to learn more and more about constructive internet resources and using it constructively for educational teaching purpose. There are some wonderful educational mobile apps. Uh, on our fingertips, we use phone daily, so we know a few names like uh, Google, uh, Google Classroom, Zoom, video conferencing, and a few other apps. But then uh, I will share a list of mobile applications uh, in the Telegram group of participants 
uh, which the applications which I'm going to share with all of you may help you to a great deal. They may simplify your task, they may save your time, they may help you in multitasking or they may help you in organizing your data as a teacher. So uh, make use of these educational mobile apps and try them out. Uh, the list uh, as I have shared, uh, I will be sharing in the telegram group. Thank, uh, next is reading. Uh, telling teachers to read is, to, is like committing a crime. But we know that the reading is an essential part of our personality, of our development, of our professional development and of our growth as an individual as far as uh, horizoning the vistas of our mind is concerned. So I don't say much upon this, but I am sharing a nice quote which I like is, leaders are readers and readers become leaders. I would like to emphasize this, that the young teachers who have joined this program should take this genuinely. They should try to read more and more because sooner or later, they are going to occupy a leadership role. So if you try to read more and more, perhaps you will be uh, able to improve yourself as a person, as a professional, as a teacher, and as a human being. Because uh, we have heard concepts like IQ, EQ, SQ, AQ, all of them are very much important. So uh, if you read books, that will definitely lead to our holistic development as a teacher. Uh, these are the few books which I should uh, recommend you all. Uh, you can take a screenshot and you can go for any of this. Uh, these are the just few recommendations. I will also share a long list of books which you as teachers should read based on my personal experience. Uh, okay, let's go ahead. We should involve in reflection which is a very essential part of our development. We often remain busy in our daily routines. We do tasks for their own sake but we don't get time or we don't sit to reflect upon what we are doing. So reflection is basically looking back at a point in the past and drawing lessons from it. Very, very few teachers of us reflect on our daily practice. So we should do it, of course, and try to make continuous changes and improvements on the basis of that reflection. We can look for something better than what we have at the moment and what we have been delivering so far. These are the few questions which we as teachers should ask ourselves. Did I teach well in the classroom? Did re learning really take place? Uh, these days, uh, of course, class, uh, talking about classroom is not relevant because all of us teachers are conducting online classes. So if you are doing that, I know all of you are putting your great efforts and I compliment you for it. But then it is worth asking yourself, did learning really happen or uh, there is no need to become uh, there is no need to become negative or there is no need to become become pessimistic because learning is not taking place or it is taking place to a very less extent ask yourself what did students actually learn i know it's difficult during these online teaching times but then it is our moral duty as a teacher you can do that you can ask did i put my best to teach them technology and e-learning are not as simple as the seem because we have suddenly migrated into a new world. But then it is up to your part to ask yourself, did I put my best to teach them? What promoted learning? What hindered the learning? How much time did I really talk to students? To whom did I talk? Did I talk to just uh, a few students or did I address all? Did I behave well as a teacher? How can I increase my students' satisfaction level? How can I ensure that they achieve something, they learn something definitely? And what special qualities do the best teachers have and display while teaching? I'm sure all these questions, if you reflect upon them, they will teach you a lot. Uh, this is a very interesting model of teacher's development. The first step, uh, there are five stages. It can be said that there are five stages of teacher development if they do it in a conscious manner. The first stage, is inaction when we don't want to learn something new or we want to stay as we are in our comfort zone that is the mode of inaction second stage is the stage of investigation because of your own desire or because of the pressure from the management you are compelled to learn something you are compelled to look upon the learning opportunities when you start doing that initially you have some uh, dilemma initially you have some doubts initially you have some pain initially you have some discomforts but when you are steady about your growth, when you are conscious that I want to do it, 
you will be able to enter the third stage that is application stage you will be see things able to see things in a new manner and we will be able to apply whatever you are learning the fourth stage is integration that means you become very conscious and particular learner you become very uh, choosy about your growth you become very definite and decisive that i want to grow, uh, grow myself as a teacher and you start integrating some basic better things in your teaching and learning so that's the point we can call integration and finally when after much reflection and experiences you realize that there is no way but to sustain myself except by learning new skills that is the stage which is which can be called transformation and we as teachers should try to reach to this stage as early as possible in our lives see sooner or later all of us are going to manage anyhow but then i believe that if we reach to the fifth stage that will give us immense satisfaction the joy of creative satisfaction and much more final top point the last point that i am talking about is creating brand as a teacher now this is something new for us and as such many of the teachers feel that there is no need of this because if a teacher or he or she is working honestly if he or she is working uh, in a dynamic manner uh, by giving his or her best there is no need to think about this i agree to them but then i am not meaning to i i don't mean to say that you want to showcase or you want to highlight or you want to uh, uh, do it in a very superficial manner but i am talking about being genuine as a teacher uh, although by by making or not making conscious efforts you have to create your genuine image as a teacher and that's what i am going to talk about see your brand as a teacher depends on two factors this see these are based on my personal uh, experience and my personal opinion you may uh, make some you can make some changes as per your desire your image as a person what qualities and traits do you possess what personality do you possess and another is your image as a professional teacher that is about uh, associating ourselves with the process of teaching learning research and continuous development so it's time to scratch your mind please try if you want to build your image as a teacher this is the first step you should try to recall the fruitful steps taken by you in your teaching in your teaching career so far you can recall qualification and courses trainings academic events projects new skills or teaching methods employed by you work accomplishments and after uh, making a good record of all of this try to document them with the help of uh, your linkedin profile put them into your resume and cv uh, you can also showcase it on your online portfolio or your website if you have created another two things which i uh, i mention i mentioning here is well of course it depends on you but then you can do it uh, first is you can create your professional visiting card because that will help you in networking with people uh, of course we don't need to do it as such but then i i believe if you do it it will really help you to make your professional image uh, to a great extent another thing uh, whether or not you are techno savvy but try to create your own personal website these days uh, even much of information and guidance is available on google and youtube that will of course really help you to uh, do it in your own manner uh, with of course with a bit of practice and trial error uh, finally what i want to suggest is you should try to upgrade your unique brand by visiting career goals up, uh, frequently remaining on track professionally and taking positive steps so that you can grow and grow well much said and done we should try to prove it by performing competently as a teacher by satisfying our students expectations by having an expertise on the standards related to what we teach by delivering the best to students institute and teaching community and also maintaining your professional image on ongoing basis at the end of everything we should remember that basically we exist for students so everything apart we are there for students and we should not forget it so we should resolve ourselves to become a better teacher every year we should improve te uh, teaching skills on constant basis by evaluating twisting and changing whatever is required or whatever we have been doing for the last many years we should try to discover creative teaching methods innovative ideas and new practical useful relevant teaching strategy suppose you are a teacher of physics or chemistry or any other uh, subject for that sake 
try to search on Google innovative ways to uh, teach XYZ subject and you will find a lots of tips because we are very fortunate that we are living in this 21st century. The world has become a very uh, small place, a small town. So why not take advantage of that internet resources? Always try find, to give your best to your students by heart and mind. Now what? Keep the lamp of learning, the lamp of constant improvement lit always. That's what I can say at the end. And uh, like our tradition in the last three sessions, we depart with a wake up call. Today is a very important session. Uh, this is a very important session. And let us depart with a relevant wake up call. That is your progress as a teacher will start when you begin to see yourself as work in progress. Whether you are 30, 40, 50 or 60, on the, even on the verge of retirement, please consider yourself as work in progress because that will lead you to learn a lot as a teacher, to upgrade yourself as a teacher and to become and stay a lifelong learner through self-motivation. I think uh, these are the very uh, points which needed to be mentioned. This is a comprehensive uh, presentation based on my experience and based on my thoughts. You can add a lot upon this. There are many ways in which you can professionally develop yourself or you can resolve yourself, you can commit yourself to become a lifelong learner. But uh, as per the limitations of time, space and technology, let us restrict ourselves. I am happy to uh, be a part of this wonderful training program and also happy to get, get connected to all of you. I thank you for attending all the sessions of mine. You can share, uh, feel free to share your feedback observations or suggestions on my contact number and or on my email ID. With that, I would like to uh, close it. Thank you very much. And I expect that all of you have received something positive, something fruitful from this entire training program. Let me congratulate you for completing this training program successfully and also compliment you for the hard efforts that you are making at your institute level to teach students with the help of technology. Knowingly or unknowingly, we all are learning something in this COVID-19 times. So let us resolve ourselves to be better and keep our progress on a steady path. Thank you very much once again. I look forward to receive some valuable comments or suggestions from all of you on my personal communication uh, number and email ID. Thank you very much.